Philippine Pharmaceuticals in association with Higher Secondary Principals Forum. Hello everyone, this is Vinita Pawar and today we are going to discuss about secondary activities. So in this lesson, we will be first studying about what are secondary activities, manufacturing and its characteristic features. We will be discussing about factors for location, uh, location of industries, classification of industries, traditional large scale industrial regions, etc. So let us begin with the first slide, definition of secondary activity. So students, you must have studied in the previous chapter, okay, that agriculture, mining, forestry, okay, these are the main bases of primary activity, which are responsible to give a raw material to the secondary activities. So, primary activity and secondary activities are interlinked to one another. So, what happens is that once we have a raw material in hand, a kind of a transformation is required and this transformation occurs in secondary activities. Now understand it this way that if we have a raw cotton in hand, okay, then this raw cotton will not be that useful. But if it is transformed into a thread, a yarn, and finally a cloth material, then it will be much more useful. Similarly, if we have a raw iron okay, obtained from mine or raw mineral obtained from mine, then that mineral will not be that useful, but if it is converted or transformed into uh, iron or a steel, okay, then it is much more useful. It can be useful in uh, infra infrastructural purposes, it can be useful in automobile industries, etc. So, the whole idea is to make the thing much more viable in the market. So, as I have told you, a kind of transformation is required. And this transformation results into a value addition, okay. Same example again, uh, cotton, raw cotton is not that uh, pricey or costly, but when it is converted into a cloth material, then it is uh, much costly, isn't it? So, this transformation is there that comes in this secondary activity. So, uh, what is the definition of secondary activity now? Secondary activities are those activities where raw material is transformed into the finished goods, okay. Then there is a word called as manufacturing. So what is this manufacturing? Now manufacturing is a process or it is that sector of economy which transforms raw material into finished goods. When I say manufacturing, it may be primitive in nature or it may use modern methods of production. So what are the processes involved in this? It may be stamping of iron, uh, iron and steel or metal or uh, large scale um, uh, pa power is used, okay? uh, assembly line workers are working. Okay? So these are the different processes which are involved in manufacturing. This manufacturing has certain characteristic features. So let us see which are these characteristic features. First, it's specialization of skills or method of production. Now what does we mean when we say specialization of skills? Factory produces only those items which are made to order. So when a large scale manufacturing is established, bulk of uh, items are created, okay. So specialization of labors, standardization of commodities comes into picture because anybody cannot be a part of that unit. So some kind of trainings are uh, required, some kind of skills uh, a person has to have, okay. Uh, 
uh, say for example specialization always helps the person to uh, focus on his uh, particular activity of production uh, no, uh, normally we have you must have seen uh, doctors uh, who um, who normally are the specialist we call them as a specialist if we have a heart specialist then he is a person who performs the heart surgery or we have laborers who work in a assembly line uh, in a car manufacturing so often we look at these people as the experts or the specialists who are very good in performing their uh, task or uh, the they are very good in their own field isn't it so why we call them as a specialist because they are specialized they have certain trained they are trained okay they have certain skills same way like doctors and um, uh, you know laborers we have a specialization of production techniques in secondary activities or in industries where trainees are trained to perform certain activities so that is called as specialization of skills next factor is mechanization so when we say mechanization what comes into picture is automation and use of machineries so with large scale manufacturing lot of complex machineries are involved money is incurred so bureaucracy executive workload becomes very important uh, uh, as a part of modern large scale manufacturing so uh, as i have told you before complex machineries are used uh, factories with computer control systems are there uh, uh, new machineries are implemented okay like for example a fine example can be of a chips factory okay so if we have a chips making factory which is a uh, very local in nature or a household small manufacturing unit then all the activities starting from washing of the potatoes chopping uh, frying and even packaging of those chips into packets will be done uh, manually with the help of laborers if it is a small uh, household industries but if a same factory is considered as a large scale manufacturing then automation will be there new instruments apparatus will be used machineries will be used so all the activities uh, starting from uh, as i have said uh, washing of the potatoes uh, frying packaging everything will be done by the automatic machines okay so mechanization is nothing but use of machineries so that is the second factor of manufacturing let us go to the third factor third factor is organizational structure and stratification organizational structure or stratification talks about extreme specialization of labor to finish the work at a faster speed with good quality so always organizational stratification helps the industry to assign the hierarchies okay what i have said organizational structure help the industries to assign the hierarchies that will define roles and responsibilities of the worker so it is like a plan that outlines who is responsible for what in the industry a uh, fine example will be of a car manufacturing okay so if we have a car manufacturing uh, industry there will be a group of scholars or expert who will uh, design the car first then there will be a separate unit where uh, car seats will be uh, manufactured then windows doors will be manufactured engines will be manufactured okay and then at the end there will be one unit where all these parts which are made earlier will be assembled together and what is the final output car okay but the work does not stop here once the car is ready it has to go for painting then and at the final stage whether this car which is manufactured is working or not that will be tested so testings will be done so in a nutshell what i mean to say here is that there are separate unit which are specialized to do their own uh, work in their particular respective field okay so a person from one unit will not interfere with the 
a person or with the work from other unit. So, there are stratifications, there are multi level systems, ok. So, that is something about organizational structure and stratification. Then next factor is technological innovation. So, when I say technological innovation, it is a most important part of modern large scale manufacturing. So, it involves new or modern methods of production, application of new or modern methods of production, ok. So, softwares will be used, um, new apparatus, new instruments will be used in the production of that particular products. Apart from this, when I say technological innovation, uh, it also incle includes the upgradation of that particular product. Like for example, uh, uh, you must have heard of electric bikes now, is not it? When we were small, we had never heard of electric bike, but now this is a kind of a craze that is going on in the market. So, electric bike is a kind of technological uh, innovation or the latest example will be uh, Hyundai car. Okay. So, this Hyundai car is pair up with Android Wear app okay, that allows the user to uh, fulfill different commands with the help of a smart watch, is not it very interesting. So, these are all the latest innovations, innovations means new idea, something that is different from others. So, apart from implementation of new, uh, new machineries in the field of production techniques, the technological innovation also speaks about upgradation of the different products which are produced in the industries or the factories. So, that is about technological innovation. Next factor is uneven geographic distribution. So, when I say uneven geographic distribution, what does it mean? It means that when a, a industry or a factory is located, or established, it should be uh, unevenly distributed. Like for example, if one factory comes uh, on one point, then the other factory should be away from each other, ok. Because what will happen if same type of factories come together, their profit will be shared, uh, market will be shared, ok. So, as a result, when the modern large scale manufacturing is established, they, the normally or generally they should be established away from each other. So, they have maximum profit what is there ok. So, these are some of the characteristic features of large scale manufacturing. Let us go to the next slide. Students there are certain factors since we are discussing about uh, manufacturing units or industries, there are certain factors which are responsible for the location of industry. So, let us see these factors one by one. First factor is access to market. So, what is market now? Market we all know, market is a place where buying and selling of the goods takes place. So, market is a kind of a final destination ok for the industries. So, market plays a very important role in localization of industry. So, industries always are located near the place where market is available. So, that will help them to gain maximum profit. So, access to market is the first factor. Then we have access to raw material. So, raw material is a fundamental need of an industry. So, when I say raw material, it means uh, it can be coal, iron, um, uh, cotton, sugar cane, jute ok, these are the raw materials to different industries. So, these raw materials normally which I have mentioned just now, they loses lots of its weight during the processing. So, as a result normally industries are located in the place where raw materials are available easily. The example will be a Tata iron and steel industry uh, that is located very close to the source of raw material. Then next is access to labor supply. So, where when it comes to labor supply, uh, nobody will deny a fact if I say labor is a prior requirement of an industry. So, when an industry is set up, 
lots of skilled and semi skilled laborers are required by them though we say the industries are automated though we say industries are mechanized now lots and lots of still laborers are required to perform different tasks okay so this labor or cheap availability of laborers is like a success mantra for the growth of different industries so labor availability is also very very important the next factor is access to sources of energy so energy is a fundamental requirement for any localization of industry so when i say energy it means uh, hydroelectricity mineral oil or coal so generally uh, the heavy industries like iron and steel okay these industries are located near the source of energy so energy also plays a very important role for localization of industries next factor is access to transportation so this entire manufacturing is actually useless if raw material doesn't reach to the market places and who is a medium of Uh, reaching this raw material to the uh, market places transportation so transportation and communication plays very very important role in transporting raw material from in the uh, uh, source region to industries and finished product from industries to the market so transportation when we talk again uh, the perishability of the goods becomes very very important now perishable goods are those goods which get spoiled very easily like for example dairy products meat okay so these are the products which need quick disposal of transportation okay so quick transportation is required for this so access to transportation and communication facility is another factor that is very very important for industrial location next is government policy so when a large scale manufacturing industry is set up um, government introduces certain regional policies okay and there is a kind of always this government supports the industries and there is a kind of collaboration between industries and the government so always go, uh, government gives some rewards uh, government gives some incentive financial incentives to the industries so industries always gets benefit from the government so that is something about government policies and after all it is whole and government is the whole and soul who decides different rules and regulations whether industry is able uh, should be given a permission to produce certain products or whether they should carry this products okay so all these things are decided by the industries and normally uh, by the government and normally government always favors uh, such kind of uh, industries which are coming all over so that is government policy then we have something called as agglomeration economy so what is agglomeration economy agglomeration economy is nothing but it is a cluster of industries cluster of industry means one industry will come at one point and then around it other industries will flourish okay and this minor industries will be benefited by this major industry or this major industry will be benefited by other minor industry so that is something uh, what is called as agglomeration economies okay so the cluster of economies so this is something about factors that influence industrial location let us go to the next topic we have classification of industries and industries are classified on the basis of different criteria like for example industries are classified on the basis of size they are classified on the basis of raw material they are classified on the basis of output and again they are classified on the basis of ownership so let us see this one by one first criteria of classification is industries based on size so based on size industries are classified as cottage or household industries small scale industries or large scale industries so first is cottage or household industries now the word itself tells us cottage or household okay so these industries are those industries which are working at a very minor scale and the 
place of working will be within the housing limits ok. So, these are kind of small manufacturing units. So, the artisans or the craftsmen generally uh, make use of local raw material which is easily available then he will make use of simple power of simple hand tools ok. So, whatever is produced in the factory uh, sorry whatever is produced in the household industries uh, that will be consumed by their family or the surplus share will be sold in the market ok. So, the artisan will make use of his own family members to perform different tasks in this particular manufacturing unit ok. So, these are some of the characteristics features of household industries. So, what are the example of household industry? It may be a jute making factory or it may be a, a bamboo a baskets making factory or it may be a pickle factory, furniture, uh, even a synthetic uh, say fabric actually ok. This may be the examples of cottage or household industry. So, next is small scale industry ok. Now, small scale industries are slight bigger uh, slighter bigger than the household industry. So, how to distinguish this? The small scale industries can be distinguished from household industries by the place of work ok. So, small scale industries are the industries where uh, the place of work is away from the housing limits. So, this again uses local raw material which is there, simple power driven machines are used ok. And skilled and semi skilled workers are also employed in small scale manufacturing. So, in our country, uh, in uh, last few years, India, China, Brazil, and even Indonesia, they are uh, giving lots of employment opportunities by, uh, by establishing this small scale manufacturing. So, what are the examples of small scale manufacturing? It may be a rice miller, he may be a rice miller or uh, local footwares or uh, pen making industries ok. These are the examples of small scale manufacturing. Let us go to the next large scale manufacturing. So, large scale manufacturing large it is something which is very huge it is something which is very large in nature. So, large scale manufacturing involves uh, large markets various types of raw materials are used enormous energy is utilized, advanced technologies are there ok. So, these are some of the characteristic features of large scale manufacturing. So, this large scale manufacturing is again uh, divided into traditional large scale manufacturing and high technology large scale industrial regions. So, detail about this we will be studying in upcoming slides ok. So, this is about large scale manufacturing. Then the second criteria of classifying industries is industries based on a raw material. So, industries based on raw material the first industry is agro based industry. So, agro based industries are those industries which um, are dependent on a raw material which is obtained from agriculture or agricultural fields and that is why they are called as agro based industries. So, which are the agro based industries like for example, uh, it may be a sugarcane industry, cotton industry or a silk farming, even vegetable, floriculture, uh, beverages like tea, coffee and uh, jute. Uh, jute uh, is also a kind of a agro based industry. So, this is about agro based industry. So, next type of industry based on a raw material is mineral based industries. So, mineral based industries are those industries which depends upon mineral ok. So, when I say mineral we have metallic mineral and we have non metallic mineral. When I say again metallic it means ferrous and non ferrous. So, ferrous is something that has iron contained in it. So, iron and steel industries, heavy industries are examples of mineral based industries. Again non ferrous like copper we have, gold we have, silver we have these are the industries again which comes under mineral based industries. 
So next category is chemical based industries. Now chemical based industries are those industries which uses natural uh, mineral like uh, petroleum in petrochemical industries. Okay. Then uh, this industries uh, also uses salt, sulfur and potash during the processing. So this industries, chemical based industries are those industries which again uses raw material which is obtained from wood or coal. Okay? So the best example will be uh, synthetic okay? or uh, plastic, polymer, or resins, turpentine. Okay? These are the example or even a rubber industry. These are the examples of chemical based industries. Next is forest based industries. So the word itself tells us it is quite simple. Forest based industries are those industries which are based on forest as a raw material. So which are the forest based industries? We have paper or pulp industry, we have a plywood industry, we have furniture industry, we have uh, you know even the Ayurveda which is based on forest. So these are the industries, medicinal, uh, uh, this, uh, this medical uh, medicinal factories. So these are the industries which, ba which are based on forest. So these are called as a forest based industry. Then we have animal based industries. You know it is very sad to say that uh, we human beings uh, for our personal greed often exploit the uh, animals, uh, their uh, skins and all. Okay? So animal based industries are those industries which are dependent on animals for different types of raw materials. So for example, uh, if we want a leather bag, leather industry is there, uh, wool, sweaters and all uh, they are manufacturing. So wool industries, wool textiles, uh, we have uh, ivory that is obtained from uh, elephant tusk. Okay? The industry which are based on animals for their raw material are called as animal based industries. Let us go to the next one we have basic industries. Now this is the another uh, different criteria. So these are basic industries uh, are based on the output or the product. Okay, Industry is based on output or the product. So first is basic industry. So what is a base for all other industries? Iron is a base for uh, many industries. Okay, So iron and steel industries are called as basic industries. So what is the example? Uh, iron is always obtained from uh, coal uh, this um, mines. Okay, So uh, example of iron uh, or basic industry will be iron and steel. So generally basic industries are those industries which provides their raw material, their product as a raw material to some other industries. Okay? I will say it again, basic industries are those industries which provides their own product as a raw material to some other industries. An example as I have told you iron and steel, iron and steel, uh, uh, iron and steel industry produces iron. Uh, and it is given to the automobile industries for the further processing. Okay? So this is about basic industry. Then we have consumer goods industries. Now consumer goods industries are those industries which produces the products which are directly consumed or which are directly used by the consumers. Okay? So they are consumers based uh, consumer goods industry. So example will be uh, biscuits, breads, uh, cooking oil or uh, uh, even the automobiles okay, or the phones, these are called as consumer based industries. So this is generally something which is produced to uh, use directly by the consumer and that is why uh, since consumers are directly related, they are called as consumer based industry. Next is industries based on ownership. So this is the last classification of industries based on ownership. Okay? So based on ownership we have public sector industry, private sector industry and joint sector industry. So uh, public sector industries are those industries which are owned and managed by government. Okay? So generally iron and steel industries, heavy industries are uh, normally owned by even the aircraft industries are normally owned by the government. So what are the examples Bharat Electrical Limited or we have uh, Steel Authority of India. These are the examples of public sector. Then we have private sector. So private sector is generally owned and managed by 
individual investors. So, these are the uh, sectors which is governed by the individual organization or private organization. So, profit is the main aim of this private sector industries. So, in uh, many of the uh, capitalist countries, industries are owned privately. Okay? So, what are the examples of private sector? Re Reliance, which uh, we all are aware of. Okay? Then we have Vipro, Hero Honda Motor Limited, these are the examples of private sector industries. Then we have joint sector. So, joint sector industries are uh, owned by either joint stock companies or by public and private sector combinedly. They work, uh, they work hand in hand. Okay? So, this is about joint sector. The example will be Amul Milk or Maruti Suzuki. Okay, these are the example of joint sector industries. Next is traditional large scale industrial regions. Traditional large scale industrial regions are based on heavy industries and are often located near the coal fields. Such industries are engaged in smelting of iron, uh, heavy engineering, textiles, etc. These industries are often known as smokestack industry. Now, what is smokestack? Smokestack is a kind of a chimney that is fixed on top of the factory uh, from which lots of industrial effluents are discharged into the atmosphere. Okay? So, because of that chimney, it is called as a smokestack industry. So, generally, such industries generate high proportion of employment. Okay? But the overall condition around these industries are not very positive in nature. Like for example, uh, uh, it supports, as I have told you, it generates lots and lots of employment. It supports uh, densely populated regions of the world. But the people which are living, uh, they are living in an inferior type of houses. Okay? Then uh, uh, unat unattractive climatic conditions or unattractive environments are there. Lots of heaps of uh, waste is created which results into again pollution, diseases, etc. Okay? Derelict land, a land that is not useful for anything, that is another common characteristic feature of traditional large scale industrial region. Okay? So, the fine example will be a Ruhr coal field of Germany. So, it has been one of the major coal field of Germany for a, a long period of time. So, here what happened with Rohr coal field was there, as the time passed on, the demand for coal started reducing. So, as a result, industries were shrinking and that resulted in decay of some industrial units. Okay? So, these are some of the examples or these are some of the characteristic features of traditional large scale industrial region. Then next we have high technology industry, concept of high technology industry. So, high technology industries are those industries which uses sophisticated technology to attain a kind of a perfection level. Okay? So, this is a latest generation manufacturing activity we can say. So, uh, lots of uh, bulk of production is there, technological advancement is there. Artificial intelligence is there. What is artificial intelligence? It is also called as machine intelligence where machines are programmed to work. Okay? Then professional workers are there. Uh, computer added designs are there. Okay? So, the overall it is high tech. It is modern in nature. Okay? So, there is a office come lab setup. The industries are much neater and cleaner in uh, space. Okay? So, these are semi skilled workers are working, uh, electronic control of smelting of iron, refining processes are there. Okay? These are the characteristic features of high technology industry. So, a good example will be Silicon Valley okay, of California. Again, we have a Seattle region which is said to be the technopolis of the world. So, overall these industries contribute, these are high tech industries and they contribute to the significant growth of a particular nation. Next is iron and steel industry. Okay? Now, iron and steel industries are the base for all other industries. 
therefore it is also called as basic industry and heavy industry it is called as basic industry because it provides raw material to many other industry that is iron and again it is called as heavy industries because lot of bulk of raw material bulky raw material is used and even the products which are produced out of iron is very heavy in nature okay so normally these industries are located near the coal field okay so iron is extracted from iron ore by the process of smelting and then it is reinforced by and strengthened by adding magnesium to it okay so such industries as i have told you they are generally located near the coal uh, uh, source of raw material region so which are the places where we have iron and steel industry in india we have durgapur bilai roar kela and bokero these are the famous places okay which are uh, able to give iron and steel to different industries then in asia we have nagasaki tokyo yokohama and shanghai region in world we have pittsburgh which is also called as a rust bowl okay so what happened with uh, pittsburgh was that um, as the time passed on the demand started reducing so as a result other um, other factories also had come up in and around so now it it is giving but the amount of iron that is supplied is very less that's why it is called as a rust ball now then we have great lake region atlantic coast region okay so if we generalize almost all continent continents have uh, their own production of iron and steel across the globe okay so that is about iron and steel industry then we have cotton textile industries now when i say cotton textile industry uh, it is categorized into three categories that is handloom power loom and meal sector so handloom is a labor intensive uh, manufacturing unit a small scale manufacturing unit it is okay a uh, small hand tools are used labors are used okay the scale of production is very less so spinning weaving this processes are involved in handloom uh, example will be uh, what mahatma gandhi has introduced charkha okay so this is a example of handloom industry then we have power loom industry power loom industry is lighter bigger than the hand loom industry so machineries are used semi skilled workers are utilized there is generation of employment opportunities so volume of production increases then we have mill sector mill sector is like a large scale manufacturing where huge amount of capital is invested large machinery is used, is used production is uh, very huge in nature okay so there are many industries uh, who which comes under mill sector like we have many industries in india we have china we have industries in pakistan uzbekistan and egypt also okay so nowadays uh, there is a tough kind of a competition in uh, in the market against the cotton textile industries because of the presence of synthetic fiber okay so as a result this cotton textile industries are showing a declining trend okay so that is all about the cotton textile industries thank you very much um, stay safe and uh, have a blessed day ahead prudent scholars powered by Lupin Pharmaceuticals अब आपकी सुरक्षा आपके हाथों में लूपी से हैंड सैनिटाइजर आपका और चेन्नई सुपर किंग्स का फर्स्ट लाइन ऑफ डिफेंस अब आपकी सुरक्षा आपके हाथों में लूपी से हैंड सैनिटाइजर आपका और चेन्नई सुपर किंग्स का फर्स्ट लाइन ऑफ डिफेंस अब आपकी सुरक्षा आपके हाथों में लूपी से हैंड सैनिटाइजर आपका और चेन्नई सुपर किंग्स का फर्स्ट लाइन ऑफ डिफेंस